podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy, ECEO. And I'm Money Moses, by the way, and we create content every damn day. Hey, man, listen, man, that's the truth, boy. You said that, and and I promise we've been grinding ever for since uh, then. ever since then. Ever since then. 3,000 videos later, man. What Stop you, playing. What Two years, 3,000. That's a grind. But guess what, y'all? We got a special guest in here today. She don't need no introduction, man. I started seeing a... A while back, man, she went off on a finesse two time beat, and everybody went yeah, crazy, and the world was erupted, and <laughs> and people were calling my damn phone, and I was like, man, don't call me no more about that girl. I don't want to hear that now. Don't yeah, do that. they were like, nah, man, she hard, she hard, she hard, man. And man, here this weekend, I I, I had I had to respect her, man. It's something seeing you. Be on the truth is in the building. Thank you. Hey. How you doing, girl? I'm good. I'm good. Man, thank you. Thank you. I, I know it was short it's a notice. Pleasure. It was short notice. It was short notice. And I mean, you know, uh, I like to go into just just the background of who you are, like get into detail on on just just coming up, raised. Uh, where you, where are you you originally from? East Texas. I am. What part? East Texas, Tyler. Oh, East Tyler. Tyler, the loop, <laughs> Gentry. No, I'm from North Tyler. I am. <laughs> I, we, I mean, our family's from Shady Grove, which is like country, country. But yeah, North Tyler. Wow, Tyler, Texas, like three. like um, Tyler, Texas. You know, you down there. Shout out to Nico. Yeah, you know, shout Small out a, to B O C. Yeah, 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 yeah. There they go. Yeah, you know, there they go. You know, I remember they were hard on that boy. They mm -hmm. was not trying to hear it. Mess with B O C. We were balling out of control. Shout out, out man. Shout out to Nico. Man, so like like during that during that whole phase, you were you were you rapping even then? I was. So originally, my family's from East Texas, from Tyler. I was raised in Seattle, in okay. Washington. So I left Texas when I was like four. Uh, my mom took me there. She met her father for the first time. We moved to Seattle. And so growing up, that's where I was. I spent my whole life there until I was 17. And then I came back to Texas. Really? So it was your, it was your just your mom? My mom and my granddad raised me. And your mm -hmm. granddad. Yep. Where was your dad yep. at? I never met him until I was 16. Wow. I was 16. And, that, he, and he lived in Arlington, so he lived in Texas. So how did, how did that do you? How did that affect you? You know, I always said it didn't until recently. Break it that took down. me that long to realize. I really felt like I didn't have a void because my granddad was so present. Was the city. So, and he was very involved and, I, and we lived with him. So to me, that was like my dad. So any daddy, daughter, dad, you know, everything he was there. So I never really asked about my father. Never. Mm -hmm. Didn't know his name. Never cared. Um, and then when she finally was like, I found your dad. And I met him, came down here, I had siblings. And I really, want, I was the only child growing up. So I really wanted siblings more than a father. I think, you mm -hmm, know, so mm -hmm. I was more clingy to my sisters and finding out I was older sister um, was huge for me. Um, but I really didn't think I had daddy issues until probably like a year ago. <laughs> wow. And and you say you start feeling that void being empty, certain things that you feel like would have been different if you'd had the time to spend with him. Yeah. 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 Certain things that I allow that I think, I don't know, I could be wrong. You could be because I'm going to tell you something. As long as you got to, you know, I believe in God. So mm -hmm. I believe your Heavenly Father, He, he fills the gaps. Yeah, you know, and I sure. think that you walk in your destiny. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So at the end of the day, there is no mistake because the, the handwriting's on the wall. That's true. You know what I'm yep. saying? So you don't have to worry about making a mistake because as long as you keep taking that one step, He's taking two and three and four and five right. towards you. So you I just, I mean, you, you, um, so. When did you um, like when 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 you think about it, what were some things key moments in Seattle that happened? Key moments. My um, grandfather was a club owner. Okay, and he was a photographer, so he was always on like the Al Heyman tours. Um, a lot of people don't know who Al Heyman is. Oh, but anyway, I know who he, um, is. he was. He was always on the tours, taking yeah. pictures. Yeah. Um, so I was always. I grew up honestly in. He was successful. Wow. Um, he owned clubs. He owns casinos. Um, so I just, I, I, I always met celebrities. I always was around it. Um, and in my life, I knew I wanted to be successful. Who was I, the early on celebrity? Oh, man. LL Cool J was what? my first. He was my first person I met was LL. How old was you when you met LL? Oh, probably like five. And you was like, this nigga, this nigga is. I didn't know, How who, did he was. You know who he was. Oh. I didn't. Oh. But I mean, when I, but I have like a thing in my house with all the pictures, right? So LL Cool J, Janet Jackson was my first. Uh, Rhythm Nation was my first tour I ever went to. Um, so Janet Jackson, um, man, the, the Temptations, the Whispers, Cash Money, Rough Riders, um, just everybody, DMX, wow. Jay Z, Ja Rule, wow. Jada Kiss, Ludacris, you see them coming through Seattle. Everybody because of your, your yep. dad. Mm -hmm. 
My yeah. grandfather, yep. Your, your, grand, your yep. grandfather. Man, we that's... always had passes, and you know, so we always were able to see. So that's how I got into hip-hop wow. and to rap. We went to a Cash Money Rough Rider tour in Oakland. He was on the actual um, west wing of the tour. And so the Cash Money Rough Rider tour, um, they did the song, I Need a High Girl. Wow. And I heard it, and I was like, ooh. And back then they had the CDs where they had the instrumental and all that. So on the instrument, I put my little thing in, and I wrote a record to the instrumental. Wow. And that's how I started rapping. And, wow. I, and mine was I Need a Hot Boy. And that was my first record. I ain't never stopped since. Wow. Uh, yep. You? How old were you? Man, I was third. That's uh, let me tell my age. You uh, almost said you wrote a song called Hot Boy. I mean, uh, yeah. I was thirteen. I was a, I was a kid. Exactly. And well, still, I, I wasn't cursing though. My mom wouldn't let me curse, but I still was. You know, so I ended up being the opening act for a couple of the dates on the tour. Um, so I mean, it went quick. But my he had a lot of you know he knew a lot of people, so I was able. He was able to help me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's what I did. I came back to Texas, started feeling myself, got grown, um, and wanted to be grown. You know, and. Um, you know how that go. When you want to be grown, uh, you fall you off. Grown. You know, I wanted to be grown. So my granddad was always like, hey, once you start being grown and feeling yourself, you can do it yourself. Yeah. And uh, he, he stuck to that. So, wow. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, you you definitely, you you know, you you dope. Like, okay. I heard you. I, I loved your uh, performance when y'all had the woman's, uh, I seen, that was when I seen yeah, you perform. Yeah, yeah. Break was the, the cycle. Break the cycle. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Mama Scott. Shout out to Mama Who uh, always, uh, uh, getting on my damn nerves, but that's my dog. You know what I'm saying? That's my dog. Don't do her. I love her. <laughs> do her. I love no, her. But definitely, um, just like, um, how, how how much of a breath of fresh air is she, you know, for you? You know what? Mama Scott, when I met her, I was actually about three years ago, two years ago, I started during COVID. I started wanting to do concerts. Mm. Um, and I wasn't rapping at the time. I had stopped rapping in corporate America, doing my own thing, I'm entrepreneur stuff. And I wanted to do concerts. I always wanted to be a promoter since I seen, you know, as a as a youngster. So I finally had enough money and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna throw a concert. And I threw um, a concert for Fujiano. Okay. It was the week before, as soon as I booked him, three days later he went on the run. Wow. And the feds picked him up. Mm. So I had just sent my money <laughs> and it was like, he in jail and they're not letting him out. And I'm like, where's my money at? So I had to go through a whole bunch of shit to get my money back. But I had already started promoting the concert. I paid for the building, radio, everything. And Mama Scott was the first um, person to sign up her people for as an opening slot. Wow. So she had sent me like $3,000, I think, for her whole team to perform. And I was like, oh, my God. When everybody started, the news started going that he was in jail. Everybody was like, oh, my God, we're going our money back. And Mama Scott was like, I called her and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, I'm trying to replace him with another artist. I said, but I know you sent me a lot of money. I said, you want it back? She was like, no. And I had never met her. She was like, nope, we riding with you. Whoever you get, we coming. And I'm like, you sure? She's like, yep, hold on to the money. Whoever you book, we're we going to be there. That's my girl. And I end up uh, getting Key Glock. And we did the show. And um, I just had her so much respect for her just because of how she maneuvered in that situation. And I was like, she understands. She understands bigger. Everybody She's else was scrambling. You know, and she was like, no. You know, and so just her respect. I, I just... It's hard to find genuine people in this She shit. got a good heart. Yeah, it's hard to find genuine people in this business and um, that don't have an ulterior motive. And wow. for it to be a woman, it's so hard for black women to get along. It's so mm -hmm. hard for women to see value in each other. Mm -hmm. um, so just being around her and her energy and her spirit, she's always like, what can I do? And I be telling her, like, quit giving away shit. Like, you got to charge you for something. Didn't, you didn't see our and, interview? And I'm like, did why? Did you watch Bone Star I do. Yeah, I did. did. Did you see I when did. I told her, quit, you hell, you, give it, you, you was going the extra mile yeah. too much. But she, she, you know, when you love people, some people do suck that dry from you, though. And, and before it turns you sour. And I'm like, I'm thankful that it hasn't made her cold, though. You yeah. know, what she's learning, you see like she's getting some knowledge from it, but she hasn't turned cold, and that's a good thing. It, it, um, when you're a real hustler. Yeah. See, yeah. when you get, I mean, I done did this so long yeah. and took people and put money up so long, it don't even bother that. It, like, you, it, to you, it's nothing to everybody else. It's, it's big. big. Yeah. But yeah, when you're absolutely. a hustler, it don't even phase absolutely. you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's an investment. Yeah. So, to answer like, your question, she's definitely a breath of fresh air. Just to have a, a woman in this business that gets it, that understands it's hard to have those conversations. And as we start building, I used to call and be like, Mama Scott, get off Facebook. All that yelling and cussing people out. I'm like, you got a business to run. You know, so I'll be trying to tell her, you know, different stuff. But we just grew a real, real friendship. And so, so I heard you fast ENT now. Is that true? 
I don't, I don't got no chain. Oh, Mama Scott. Got chain Mama yet. Scott. Not yet. Where my chain out? Trust me, the chain coming. coming. Where my chain out? I guarantee it's coming. I want a pink. I want my pink. But you, you, she is, she is managing you, right? Where's the, which we're talking about how we can figure like things she out. She said she's managing you. She told me that. She's stepping up to the plate. She said you she, need she, a manager. She, I do. I do. I've been managing myself. <laughs> you know how hard it is to manage yourself and be yourself. Uh, but yeah, and, and it's a respect. Not too hard. Too. You got to. Uh, I think mean, yeah. Eddie Griffin, hard, uh, Eddie Griffin say he, when he was uh, first moved to L.A., he say he ran outside. They say you got your age. We need to call your manager. He ran outside and <laughs> act like he was his manager. He was on the phone with him himself. It, yeah, <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it, it is a different it. respect level. You know, when you have somebody representation, it's like how big could you possibly be if you're talking on your own behalf? And that's how people see it. It don't matter. God you know, got a blessing. He do. We he do. And so he's all working that. out. We're trying to figure out how we can collaborate to, with each other and be of help to each other and, and go to the to the top. Wow. I definitely um, um we are on my team. I, sure. I want to talk about what got you on my show. You know, this morning I woke up. And I've been trying to avoid you for a long time. Why, let's let's get to that. Why? No, let, don't, don't try well, to graze first by all, that. This is not your interview. You will be interviewed. Today. You can't graze this by is, that you're statement. Not, this is not your platform to do oh. me an interview. So oh. all I'm saying is, what I see, what I see in you was the fact of you a hustler, and I get it. But everything that's easy, people don't respect it. True. So if, I felt like if I make it to where I, I knew you was talented, but I just I feel like. That's what make people a little weak and soft is mm. when you too easy and you mm -hmm. let things happen too easily for them. They don't You're respect it on that it. level. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it, and it's it, God got a timing thing that He used that's way bigger than our time. Mm. So look, so you here now. So what happens mm -hmm. is you. I look at the thing this morning. I see you holding a bag of money, mm -hmm. and um, you standing with Carl Crawford, which that's my partner. Okay. Like we talk a lot. Mm -hmm. So you don't know that, but at mm -hmm. the end of the day. It's like, damn, she did it. Okay, she done got to she done got to somebody that she was with Mama Scott. That was good. Now <laughs> okay, now she done won and then you was with on rap economics. We're mm -hmm. gonna talk about that as well. Right. Certain things the way you move, I watch that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to make sure that I'm in the right dynamic with the right people as right. we keep pushing up. Absolutely. So like what was it like and what was this contest? Because I knew nothing about it. So the contest was Fifteen thousand, like fifteen oh one, fifteen k, where they're kind of rebuilding their brand. You know, you know the past artists and things like that. So they're trying to rebuild their brand. So I'm guessing they're doing like a talent scout type of thing, but there's a reward and you know a prize. And in the same time, they're trying to find new talent. So they did it in Houston. Um, I see they posted like two weeks ago, and I'm like, yeah. So I called Mama Scott. I'm like, you see that post? She's like, yeah, I seen it. And you always just think shit is just fluff and a scam now. I ain't gonna say scam because I hate that word, but you just feel like it's always some extra shit and layers to things. Um, and I seen it. Then I seen Tony Neal was a DJ, and I'm like, it might be. Legit, if Tony come fly down and judge, and I'm like, eh, you know, so I'm like, let me think about it. So I emailed the email on the on the flyer, asked about it. The response was professional. And they're like, this is what it is. You don't have to sign a deal. This is that. This is that. And you know, here it goes. So I'm like, I talked to Mama Scott. And I'm like, I don't know. I said, I ain't putting. It's just five hundred dollars to get in it. I said, I don't trust it. I said, I ain't putting my five hundred dollars. She was like, I'll, I'll give you five hundred dollars. That's love. And I'm like. So she just gave you 500 to enter, enter the contest. She did. Because I was like, eh, I ain't got no more money to waste. I don't waste it too much. Wow. And she's like, just do it. I think, she was like, if I give you $500, I know you're going to win. And I'm like, well, if I don't, you're going to be low out your money, you know. And so, uh, speaking of her, I still got to wire her some money. But um, I'm cool. like, you know, and so she was like, yeah. So the next thing I know, she sent me. She sent it to me, and um, you know I respected it. And now, like I said, I wasn't her artist. I wasn't. Um, it, it was nothing more than we talk every day about friend things, and we talk about the music every now and then. But it's normally the fuckery. It's normally not us trying to connect, you know. And she has her own team and her own label, um, and she's just like, "Be, yeah, I believe in you. Like, go do it. You're gonna win." I'm like, "All right." Then I kept thinking about canceling after I sent the money off, and I'm like, oh, "I want to go to Houston it's on a Sunday. I got to work Monday morning." And I'm like, "You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go." And I went ahead and went, and you know, anytime I put my mind on something, it's going. I'm gonna execute. What the did you work? What did I? Man, you know what time I got home? Four thirty-four. No, four forty-nine. My alarm clock goes off at five oh five. I pushed it back to five thirty-five, so I had thirty-five minutes of sleep. I worked a full shift yesterday. From seven thirty to six last night, went home and went to bed at nine. What did you? How many did you just rap one song? Three minutes. You got three minutes. 
And everybody was on a timer. It's so a three minutes. Well, it, you you gave them your instrumental. Mm -hmm. Gave them a flash drive. What was the song? I did a verse to "Oh Let's Do It," and then I did a verse of my single "Back Talk," and I put them together. And you killed that thing. Killed it, absolutely. And they seen that. And he, he he just said you knew the business. Mm -hmm. That's the what he told was, me. I don't think it was a rapper. It was something else. No, they had to see no. He told me. He, he said, said I'm in business. <laughs> well, I don't know the business. I don't know. He was like, you about to, he, he felt like you you did what you had to do. Yeah. You did what what needed to be done. That's right. the way Carl told me. Right. And, and, and cause I understood I told, the assignment and where's the key? That's what, that, you know <laughs> what? That's what he said. Okay. That's hard. And and, and for you to, to, to do it and to be recognized for something that you've done for so long. Mm hmm. Absolutely. How did that make you feel? It felt good. It did. It did. And that's what Tony was like. He called and he's like, were you even happy? You look like you wasn't even happy. I said, because I'm so used to bullshit. That I did, it's almost like I was just waiting for them to be like, to kind of fuck me out of it. Because it's normally some shit, you know? So I've been already prepared. So when they said I won, I was like, like, really? Like, you sure? Like, and you know, it's kind of like, okay. And they're like, here's the money. Like, and I'm like, okay, like, this is it. You know, so it's sometimes we just be feeling like, you know, after you deal with so much fuckery and bullshit, you, it's hard to just see the good. It's funny because sometimes a door is shut, but two, three doors are open. Absolutely. Like, um, I remember you was, you, you did go up for next up, didn't you? Yeah, up next, yeah. Up next, mm -hmm. I had that boy on here, a half fight, and I showed, I didn't get to ask him about that, I showed with a guy, you better be glad I, girl, I'm crazy. <laughs> he come on but, our podcast uh, in a couple weeks. So, <laughs> what, I mean, you was on there, let's be real. Yeah. What was it about? I told him the other day, these people put money up, pay money, there's never been a grand, uh, he said it's coming though. Mm. He told me it was coming, I was like, I was on him about that, because, mm. It's like, you know, people want to win. They mm -hmm. want to, what is this? Right, yeah, that's so them. give me an understanding of what happened over there. So you were, you, you had to pay like, I think it was like 200 or 299 or something like that. And then when you, you pay it, you were going to get a beat track of all the beats. You could pick your beat. Um, and then the winner was going to be a reality show slash like grand finale, grand prize winner, of like $10,000, a video shoot, all this and that. And when they promoted it originally, it was like, Kind of like the Dallas, um, the Dallas heavy hitters or the gatekeepers are going to pick the next star of Dallas. It's kind of the way it sounded. Like we've all kind of teamed together, and now we're going to pick who's next out the city. And I'm like, okay, so it's like maybe six months after I decided to start back rapping. So I'm like, perfect. And I see Duffy. I'm like, I know her. No hit there. No pie. No baby. You know, I'm like, this should be easy. Like I'm just gonna come in and kill it, right? And so, <laughs> ha, no. Um, so I, I signed up, I go, the, it was really nice. The production was like grand. It was really nice. I was like, damn, I spent a lot of money on this. Like, this is boy. nice, right? Let's do it. And so I'm like, yeah. So I go, um, they give you 30 seconds or a minute to do your song. They tell you, you can do acapella or instrumental to the beats. I didn't like any of the beats really. So I just was like, I'm just do acapella. That way I know I can deliver it. I do it. They're literally like speechless. Every pint, Duffy, um, hit the, everybody speechless. Just like they didn't say nothing. Like, and I'm like, and you know, hit this like I already knew you was hard. Definitely, like I knew you was hard. Pine was like, I never really heard you. I didn't think you was that hard. Cool. So I'm like in my mind. Now mind you, we got a chance to watch everybody on the TV. So I'm watching everybody. You know, you know how to size up your competition. Like, mm. so it's only a couple people on there. Like Sam Dallas, Kiki, Pay Wade. It was a few people on there where I was like, they're talented. Like, and they really have talent. You know, everybody else, I was just like, mm, I don't really see nobody. So I, you know, I kind of got it in the bag. Um, and no disrespect to anybody who was on it, but that's just how I felt. And so, um, and, and so that was that. So I'm thinking, you know, they're gonna do like the top 24, then the top 12, then the final. So I'm like, okay, only the top 12 got to go on the show um, and do the challenges. You're gonna have a challenge each week. So I get to the top. They make me go to the next round. They're like, next time, don't use the don't do don't do a cappella. You need to pick a beat next time. We want to see if you can make a hit. So I'm like, okay, well, the, but the production really wasn't hit production. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard to make a hit and then one minute. So I'm like, okay, cool. So they give me another beat list. I pick one. I finally select the beat. I go back for the second round, and um, we watch everybody perform. Literally every person. We were there all day, and they picked the top people, and they didn't pick me. Damn. And I was like, and this one time Jay White was there as a guest. And I know Jay White. And I'm just like, are you telling me, I just watched all this, 
and you found 11 people that were better than me here. You know? And even Bebe kind of looked like, you know, like, but he wasn't, he was just a host. And so I'm like, okay, but mind you, it's just, again, it's just politics and it is what it is. And so Duffy, myself and Duffy and myself and hit that. And they both, they both had to feel how they feel about to basically saying like, I think your time has come and gone and you should go get a young little, little, little chick that's, you know, 17, 18 and turn her up because it's just a young people game. And that's what it is. And like, these are coming from people that are older. He's been saying it. That's it. And that's fine because I do definitely see that, that it is, it is geared like that. <clears throat> However, just like American Idol, they have an age cutoff. And they'll tell you anybody over 28 can't compete. That's and right. it's been like that. 16, 28. So when people pay their money, give stipulations. You can't win if you're this. Mm -hmm. You can't win if you're signed. You can't win if you're this age. You can't win if you can't travel. Whatever the stipulation. But once I pay, I become a fair contender. Yep. And because you know me personally, well, like I said, I said, have these holes here look older than me. Let's be real. But because you know me personally, you know that I'm older. You don't even know how old I am, but you know I'm, you know I'm not twenty, yeah. which is cool. But like I said, these girls that's twenty look thirty. So what the fuck's the difference? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, that, but so that so I didn't win. They go on you to didn't the short. Win. You didn't even make. You didn't I didn't place. make top twelve. Didn't even, yeah. I didn't place, and I was like, damn. You know, and it's nothing to pine because it's not. I know it wasn't just one person's call. You know what yeah, I'm saying? But they yeah. come to find out. But like I said, as soon as I left, I called Mama Scott, and I was like, she was like, she was like, bitch, you got it, didn't you? I'm like, no, not even placed. She's like, quit lying. I'm like, bro. And if it's talented people, I'm gonna say people are talented. I'm like, no, this was not, I, and I know it was personal, and I know it was not because of talent. If they show all the clips right now and have people vote, it wasn't talent-based. Yeah. And it's cool, but it's just what it was. And then I told Mama Scott, I said, I don't care because anything I have ever gone out for, ever in my life, and I didn't get it, it never see, it never follows through. It never succeeds. Well, so you're saying it didn't, it, it did. Not saying it did they succeed because of me. They kinda, but, it kind of, it kind of took a nosedive. I, I'm just saying is you hadn't heard no more about right. it, right? And I just not that not that because of me it did that. Don't, I'm just saying is anything that I've, I've never take, taken a real L and so, been like, damn, I could have been that, and that could have been me. I never took an L like that. It's always something I I was supposed to be in the three LW when they replaced Notori, yeah, and they didn't end up doing it. Then the left eye thing they was gonna replace left eye after she passed away, and I got to like the top five, and they was like, no, we're not gonna do it. everything that I've ever auditioned for that I came close. It just never seemed to flourishion. So I never felt like I'm like it's not gonna. It's what it is. That's hard. So I I'm like here. it. I actually like it. Um, but I, I love them all. I think you, yeah, yeah, you should. Just I mean, at the end of the day, all of those people. I, I mean, I spoke to Duffy. I think one time on the phone years ago about doing some photography. I believe she does photography back then. She mm -hmm. was doing some. Am I right? I think she did do that. I think she did. I I'm think she did start with you. pictures. She did. She did. She did. She did. I, I was a long time ago. She probably don't even remember. She's definitely multi and, multifaceted. Uh, then um, Mr. Hit that grew up buying clothes out here when he was calling himself Mr. Hit that. Mm -hmm. This was here. Right. Um, and. Half pint, of course. I met him since we did uh, Boss Talk One Hundred and One. I've been giving him hell ever since. He knows that. <laughs> you, cool. you know. Um, I just say, you know, at the end of the day, what's for you? It's for you. And exactly. then nobody can take it from you. Absolutely. So at the end of the day, it was a good run just to be over there and see that God has something in there for you. Mm. I don't know what it is, but it was something there. Mm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That's how I always. Well, I don't know what it was. Most money ever won. What? Oh, you talking about we back to Carl Crawford? Won. You talking about the fifteen? Yeah. Yeah. Just from a, a in the contest, yeah. In the rap, yep, it is. It is. Every, so. every time you lost, you went. Your yeah. Got that's bigger. why. That's why I don't never like. I never <clears throat> like. I never question God. Like relationships, guys, like nothing. I always can track back to like how it turns shit around. Let's, every time. Let's talk about the, the the when you took finesse two times a beat and mm -hmm. killed that song like that like. Matter of fact, spit me a little bit of that verse because I know you know it. Like the uh, back of your oh, head. for the real first one yeah. I did. Okay, that one. Um, get even. Uh, what was? Ooh, oh, these niggas are turn on they ain't. They, these niggas are turn on their own seeds for a bitch and say that they love them. Trying to fuck up on me and put one up in me. No, nah, nigga, use a rubber. I can't trust you. I can't cuff you, nigga. This was just a season. I was fucking with you to just fuck over him. He cheated. I was getting even. Part of me, I was just leaving. I was just getting my lick back. And he was a snake and fucking my opsy. You was just used for get back. See, I'm where he had the dope at. I know the trap where he sco at. He fucking my best friend raw too, but see, he don't even know that I know that. See, I just be smiling and cooking for him. 
has to be on in his uniform. I'm in the corner, I'm rooting for him, but fucking a hitter that's shooting for him. Nah, you know I'm just bullshitting. I'm too fly for that snake shit. I don't get even, I don't keep score. I just go run up my cake, bitch. I go and cop me a new wraith. Spend 10K on a nene. Call Kim K for a play date and go cop me a key from Enrique. The fuck do you need with a snow bunny when you got a black bitch that'll go dummy, that'll go mask up and go and get money and then bring it all back and don't want nothing? Man, you a damn fool. <laughs> You be writing, don't you? I do. You are? Do. You love it, don't I love you? it. I love it. I do it, but I love it. I love it. Oh, I love it, I too, love man. It. Like, what made, what made you just grab that and run with that? that what was, was that first, all about? You know what's crazy? That was my first time picking up a pen in, like, eight years. You just say I'm for the do time. it. It was something about that beat in the video. When I saw the video, because I done did so much time when niggas locked up. When I seen it and what he was saying, it just pissed me off. It did. It's like it struck a nerve. It was like three in the morning. I was listening to it. I was like, this nigga kind of hard. And the beat was just dumb. And I was like, you know, he's like these, these bitches are lying on it. And I'm like, nigga. And I'm like, let me tell you my job. Like, okay. And then it just went from there. And I, I list, I literally called DJ TV. Four Shout o'clock. out TV. I called him at four in the morning. And he's like, what is it? I'm like, why the fuck y'all let me stop rapping? He's talking about what? I said, I'm, man, you know how fucking cold I am when I was just kept playing it back in oh. my head what I wrote. And I was like, I sent, I sent the audio voice memo and they were like, you gotta lay that shit. And I, I had just started my credit business. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like trying to figure out a way to gain followers. Yeah. I had like a thousand followers yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. I wasn't doing any music. And I'm like, what can I do to, grant, to gain clientele? And at the very end, I was like, you lucky I only fix credit now because if not, bitch, I'd be a problem. And I was like, that's the credit commercial. And I did a whole, I was called my homeboy T, uh, T Manley and Tyler. And I'm like, come shoot me a video at my house tomorrow. And he's like, what? And I'm like, I'm gonna make a rap video. He's like, you back rapping? I'm like, nah, it's just for my credit commercial. It's and they end up going like Shade Room. It, it's on site, Hollywood Unlocked. It's went crazy. Like, it did. And, and you, you didn't even know it was gonna do that? No. I was doing it. I was trying to gain customers. Really? <laughs> that was it. But all I had thousands of DMs like Mia X. It was like Remy Ma was kind. It was so many Mia people. X hit you up? Yeah, I talk to her all the time on my DM. I do. Really? I do. She's very supportive. Very supportive. And everybody kept tagging her like she sound like you. She sound like a new Mia X or whatever. So and I always liked her and respected her so much. And so um, it was. I just had DMs full of people. And I thought they were credit inquiries. Yeah, and yeah. they always like, "Where's your music? Where's your music? <laughs> they love it. Where's your music? What's your Apple Music?" And I'm like, "I don't have none. I had nothing." And so I was like, "It took me like four months to decide to finally rap again." I was like, "I just didn't feel like it was a it was a space because it was just so diluted." And I was like, "That's just not." You know, and then finally I was like, let me just do something and see what I can. Wow, yeah. that's God. So that's see? how I circle back the block. Been the, they said your gift will always make room for you. Yeah, you know? and yeah. you never know. That's real. How? So wow, yeah. and that's crazy because I just I trip off the fact of how God will say yes. or God will say no. Yeah. But when He say yes, He say yes. Yeah. So I think like like for you to go through all of that and then to get to up next and get told that. Yeah. You got to weigh your options out now. Like, nah, I, I had some here, and this went crazy. Yeah. Because, see, that's the one thing about Boss Talk. That's the way I've been ever since I started. I never let this, this, this here is my base, of course. But right. I just come from Chicago yesterday. I'll be in Atlanta. I'll be everywhere right. with this show. You got to be able to just spread your wings and fly. Absolutely. You can't let one person depict. You got people up yeah. in, 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 in Seattle where my uncle yeah. is at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That. That they, they love supporters. you. They are. You know they what I'm are. saying? They so are. you can't you can't just let one thing predict who you are as Absolutely. a person and your Absolutely. talent, man. So it gets thank, discouraging, but kudos you know, to you for keeping off. it going. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Your sure. parent your mom, right? I am I have two children. Wow. Yep. How's that, man? Like like uh, how is it are you a single parent? I am. Wow. I am. How is that? How is that for I you? I mean it's is is easy. I'm gonna say it's easy like that, but I'm saying it's easy to do what you love. And still be able. My kids are part of everything I do, mm. and uh, my daughter, she's she's very active and loves entertainment and sings and dances. And you know, my son, he wants to be a, a concert promoter one day. And you know, it's just I love it. I love it. I love it. Being able to balance it and being able to show them what grind looks like. Let's just, talk about rap economics, um, like prayers and DJ Nike. I like, love him. They're my guys, like like very genuine guys. Man, I them dudes him. right there. They came here. They say they love Boss Talk One Hundred One. I'm like, whatever, niggas. They genuine. They like guys. when I first talked to you though. You didn't even want to hear it. You didn't. Even t- mm-hmm. That's how you do. <laughs> That's how you do. I don't feel that bad now. No. <laughs> Bro, you don't do that. You gotta understand. There's a lot of people trying to get into one space. 
We ain't no, got room for everybody. I get yeah, that. No, people. but but I, okay, so like you killed that. I listened to that. I like, did two of those. Like I seen that. Yeah, like I I, I, got, I actually got I, I got to watch both. So yeah. what was which one you liked the best? Man, I think Lil Wayne's six foot seven foot was that was hard. That first one was hard. The second one was more you did with chill. grown. Yeah. Yeah, it was more grown. More yeah. grown content. But yeah. that, that six foot seven foot was raw. Wow. Yeah. Um and and how did you end up linking with them? They hit me up after the the, the thing went viral. Really? And they kept trying to get me to come to Houston. That was before they started kind of moving around. Okay. And I just could never. And it was like, we do it on Wednesdays. And I'm just like, in the middle of the week. And I, you know, because I have kids, yeah. I work, um, I have a, you know, company. So I'm like, I just, I'm like, Wednesday, I just can't get there, you know. And so all of a sudden, they hit me up and was like, we're going to come to Tyler. And Mama Scott brought them down to Tyler. And I was like, I need to come, you know. And Mama Scott was like, come on. You already, you already got a slot. Come on. And I'm like, all right. So I went and did that. And then they came back to Dallas and hit me back up. And they're like, we're coming to Dallas again. I was like, I'm spinning the block again. As right. much as I can, any content I can get and connect and show my skills and be able to just, you know, do what I do and do what I love, I'm going to show up. Wow. I think you, like I said, you got it for the talent. That, that, that's without Thank a question. You. I just say don't let nothing stop you. I'm not. Pray about it and go at it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That's the whole game. Man, shoot, nigga, when, nigga they don't know what, it, what, what God got in Man. Yeah. Now, I'm Take it, man. Be all the truth in the building. Boss Talk 101, let's go. Yeah. Oh, let me feel the beat for a second. Yeah. Who beat is this? Let's do it. Let's get it. Boss Talk 101, man. Be all the truth. Yeah. Okay, okay, be your truth in beast mode, live by the G code, yeah I'm a spitter though, copycat the flow go, give me my swag back, Jimmy choosing snapbacks, 1B, black tracks that touch my damn ass crack, baddest in the city, yup, radio I did that, north side to five deuce, they all got black back, pretty ass street card, pretty ass bad broads, plenty bitches spit hard, but I'm the best by far, <laughs> not cocky. But a nigga like confidence Bitches like compliments Hard that shit common sense Your lackluster bars Your weak ass punches Your misconstrued metaphors You bitches don't want it Show me my opponent And show me who illa Point the hoe out Where the mic got killer And and nigga Shit on borrow Throwing darts from all angles All you motherfuckers targets Silly ass hoes Simple ass bitches Ski Ass niggas, all you motherfuckers ribbon. Yeah, Damn. nigga, you motherfuckers ribbon. Whole froggy ass niggas, really? Man, hold up, boss talk 101. <laughs> we gonna do something else too. I, I gotta give me a couple out of you. Oh my god, let's go. Hold on, what we doing? You can do that. Awesome. I like that. Yeah. Be all the truth. Let's go, boss yeah. talk 101. Yeah. Give it to me. Yeah. You're looking for them north side hoes, here we go. My bumper just fell, cause the ride is too low. Hollin' at some niggas, so I got to roll slow. A certified G for a dog ass hoe. I'm breaking both friends, and both of them know. I know it seems cold, but that's how this game goes. Let's go. Cause hoes that be plexing, I can leave them all told. I've left these hoes bruised, now they tender and swole. Yeah. Every time I hit the Club day, yeah, oh no. Jump me when I was younger, but they won't no more. Cause that girl be known to toe foe foes. They kinda send slugs straight through my no lows. Man. What's up, the slaughter and my homie Bobo? I twist the whole path so they all so low. Sipping four O's, got a chain smoking Joe's. Swishers burn quick so they rolled off the mold. Man. French roll smoke from my mouth to my nose. 30 second hole exhale, now they throwed. It's hard to sell weed cause they like to stay blowed. But make big fitty when we slang that yo. Man, hold up, hold up, hold up. Man, I, I just be having fun to be honest Me with you. Me too. I mean, that's, that's it's, it's, you, and you just love to just rap. Yeah. You do it all the time. Yeah. Okay. Now, now that you say you're back, when you stop rapping, when you still just doing something every day? I was night? writing books. I really? always, I'm always on write. Yeah. That's like my, that's like my, when I get mad or hurt, that's just instantly, I just pick up a, instantly. Really? Yeah. 
Wow. Always yeah, all, like, hurt more often. Yeah, that's all. It's like I always process anger and like hurt and whatever I'm feeling is always a right. So either it's gonna be a book or a poem or when I wasn't doing music, I still was writing raps. I just wouldn't rap it. I want to talk about that song. What, what's that new bag? What is it called? Bag. Bag talk. talk. Like, what? Um, what inspired you to do it? Just that money. You know what? Um, I was talking to Wacko from UTP um, from New Orleans. Skip and Wacko. Yep, Skip and Wacko. Me and Wacko been cool since me and Skip since I was about 13, 14 years old. And um, I was talking to Wack, and I was like, uh, after the video went viral, and he like, you you back? And I'm like, nah. I said, I don't feel like there's no place for me. I don't know what to talk about. I'm not talking about my ass, and I'm not talking about pussy. So right. I'm like, it really nothing for me to say. He like, get on there and talk that bag talk. And I'm like, bag talk. And I'm like, okay. So I was running, I was jogging around the block, and I had beats just playing on YouTube. And a beat came on, and I was just like, bitch, what the fuck I look like beefing with a bitch? And I'm like, I let my bag talk. And I just I kept saying it. And I called my homegirl Tiffany, and she wanted to rap. And I was going to give her the song. And I was like, I wrote you a song. I said, let's go in there and see how it go. And we went in there, and we laid it. She did the hook, and I was on the hook. And we did the verses, and then I put it out. And I, I, I just kept it for like six months. And I didn't let nobody hear it. And then I was in the car. I mean, it was on my, my files. So it was just playing. And my little cousins was in the car. And then I was like, who was that? And then my bag talk came on. And I was like, that's me and Tiffany. And they was like, she was like, that, that's hard. And they 16, 17. That's you know? good. And when they say it, I'm like, so I sent this to a couple more people. Then I sent it to some DJs. I'm like, what you think of this record? And they like, damn, that's hard. I sent it to Tony Neal. He like, I'm not listening to it. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, I'm trying to get your opinion. He's like, no. If it's hard, push it. And it'll get to me. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put it out there. And I did a little photo shoot for it. And it went from there. It's Man. Been, I got like 180 spins right now. Like, I'm, it's, they, they fucking with it in the radio. Shout out to The Blaze, Dwayne Black, Nim, Juice. They always, Marcus Love. All of them, they always show love um, in Tyler. So they're playing in different cities. Memphis and played it. Arkansas, Oklahoma, Shade 45. Tony Neal put it in the mix, too. So I appreciate it. What did Carl say to you that... That you that sticks out. He didn't say much. Carl Crawford is kind of he kind of he's very he reserved. reserved. He is. Um, I seen him. The crazy part was I seen him first about three weeks ago. In okay. Dallas. Okay. But I was doing our podcast and I interviewed him. Okay. And I said, "You don't know me." I said, "But you owe me a hundred thousand dollars." So mind you, when he had Erica Banks, they put out a post and had her rapping and freestyle, and it was like any any girl that can be her get a hundred thousand dollars. So I shit, I got got dressed that night and did a video. And I'm everybody tagging him, everybody tagging him, he never say shit. So I seen him, I said, you know you owe me a hundred thousand dollars from that video. He said, I didn't post that. My AR posted that. I don't know why he posted that. <laughs> he said, well, I already posted that. I said, so you owe me anyway. I said, Well, it's cool. I said, but you're gonna see me again. He was like, Yeah. And so I showed him my page. He said, I do remember. And I said, Yeah. So the crazy part was I seen him, um, then he was on Rack Economics doing yeah, the yeah. review and they played my song. And he was like, he said, I just seen her. And he remembered the name. He was like, I just seen her like a week ago. And he was like, that song hard. And he was like, where's she from? And like, Tyler. He was like, all right. And then when I walked up, when I walked into the event, he seen me. He was like, I like your song. And I was like, thank you. And that's all he said. And yeah. then afterwards, he was like, congrats. He was like, you'll be hearing from us. And that was it. That's my boy, he man. Didn't say much. Shout out to Carl Crawford. He's a dope cool reserve dude. guy. Would you sign with 1501? Huh? Would she sign with 1501? I mean, I was yeah, yeah, depending on what it looked like on paper. You will work, but with I'm not it. against. I mean, I feel like I think they have a bad rep. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there's always truth and lies to every story, and then you have just misinterpretations. And you know, on black and white, everything is always what it is. Um, and I think as an artist, you have to do your due diligence. Um, to not be when you get into this business, is music business. No, it's I don't think he got a bad rep. I and think he's learning as he go. Yeah, That's but I'm saying boy, I think man. people when people think of him, they instantly think of, you know. He learned as he go. That, you know, for me, that's what my biggest thing is like I think um, as an artist, you got to know what you're signing. You got to understand what you're signing um, and understand the investment, too, that people putting up because, I mean, mm -hmm. shit, everything is money-driven. You got to have a bag to blow, to blow right now. So whoever got the money is in charge. And uh, big bank always stay lit just what it is. Um, it. So you got to stay down with who stay down with you and who believe in you because the big labels and pit, they ain't they ain't talking to you when you this small. You know what I'm saying? And it's whoever real. do come in and step in and believe in you and show that support, it's just a piece of loyalty that I still stand on even on top of the paperwork. You got to, it is what it is. It may not be fair, but shit, it's life. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Jay-Z, Lil Wayne. Any genre? 
Uh, Jay Z, Lil Wayne, probably Luke Combs, Luke Bryan, one or two. Oh, that, yeah, I love it. I love it. I mean, Luke Bryan. Man, thank you for coming on the show, man. If you could, um, if, if if you couldn't write, you couldn't talk, you couldn't speak, and somebody had a question, like, uh, and somebody's going to do a documentary on you, and they were going to portray you as a person, give me some key things that you would want them to say. If, wait, if I couldn't talk. You couldn't speak. Mm -hmm. You couldn't, you couldn't, there was nothing else but them they had to research you what would you want them to say about you that I stood on business okay. that I was loyal that I was down like four flats and that I love my damn kids that's all yeah. that's all man how can people get a hold to you if they're trying to reach out be your truth on all platforms TikTok YouTube everything is be your B-I-O-R truth well you made it to Boss Talk 101 <laughs> I did successfully. You how didn't did kick you, me how out. Did you, how did you? How did you, how did you like the setup? How did you like? How did you I like the it. show? I love it. I love you it. You already energy. loved it already. I, huh? that's what I'm I mean, I watch it. So I already know, and I love it. I mean, I'm mad that your wife's not on here because I like y'all dynamic. Really? And you know, the, I would like the woman touch, but yeah. I definitely appreciate being here. It looks exactly how I imagined. For real? Yeah, I do. It does. I mean, I've seen a lot of pictures in here too. So Everybody I mean, be okay. Yeah, so I mean, I already kind of in my mind, but the cameras, I mean, it's the cameras in my damn face. But <laughs> <laughs> look, I just came from work. I worked all day today. I got up at five this morning. So check I, it, man. We don't want to hear that shit. I didn't even know I was coming. Check it, man. I called and she came and went down, man. Boss Talk 101. She guilty, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. <laughs>